पुंडलिक पाटिल प्रोफेसर पुंडलिक पाटिल एस एम डी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग यवला टूडे डिलीवर लेक्चर ऑन लॉज ऑफ फिक्शन सो बेसिकली वी आर सीन इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर दिस फिक्शन हाउ द फिक्शन इज क्रिएटेड एंड हाउ इट अफेक्ट अवर मशीन एप्लीकेशन और इन अवर डेली नीड्स और डेली थिंग्स सो टूडे ऑन विच लॉज दिस फिक्शन इज बेस्ड यू टू सी ओके सो वी आर ऑलवेज डिफाइनिंग दिस फिक्शन इट इज द रेजिस्टेंस टू रिलेटिव मोशन इट इज नथिंग बट इट इज द रेजिस्टेंस टू रिलेटिव मोशन और विच अपोजेस टू द रिलेटिव मोशन दैट इज फिक्शन ओके so in this laws we are seeing here first law of friction the first law of friction this is investigated by the scientist amontons and coulombs and therefore it is also known as amontons coulombs law of frictions which can state the frictional force is directly proportional to the normal load between the two contacting surfaces okay in previous lecture we are seen the example of inclined plane test tree on which one object is placed on this inclined plane and we are giving the inclination so that the object may slide down and to create the frictions okay so under this first law the frictional force is always directly proportional to the normal load okay and from this relation we are getting a third quantity as a coefficient of frictions which is defined as the frictional force per unit normal load okay so in simple relation frictional force divided by the normal load is always a coefficient of friction and this coefficient of friction is always depends on the type of motion between the contacting surfaces the material for pair of the contacting surfaces the surface finish of the two contacting surfaces and this first law of friction is applicable over the wide range of the loads and it always obeys the friction law of friction well mostly except the few material like polymers so some exceptional cases like this polymers the law is applicable to everywhere then we have to discuss this second law of frictions okay it can state the frictional force is independent of the apparent area of contact between these two surfaces okay due to the surface roughness or the asperity normally the contacting surfaces cannot make the contact all over the surfaces and this real area of the contact is less than the geometrical area of contact and therefore we cannot take total area as a geometrical area to find out this frictions and therefore the geometrical area of contact between these two surfaces is known as apparent area and actual area of the asperity contact or contact zone is known as real area of contact though this frictional force is independent of the apparent area it is dependent upon the real area of the contact okay. so it is always dependent on apparent but it is dependent on real contact areas of the surfaces third law is the frictional force is always independent on the sliding velocity okay this law is applicable over a small range of slide velocity okay so for all practical purposes the coefficient of friction can be considered as constant over the 
small range of sliding velocity. Okay, so as per this third law, the sliding velocities we have to take the coefficient of friction is always a constant since the small range of this sliding velocities. The fourth law is again another law developed. The static friction is greater than this kinetic frictions. Okay, that is why because the static frictional forces are always higher than the kinetic frictional forces, and the static friction is the friction between the conductive waves, start of the motions by the kinetic and the relative motions or under motions. So another one is. How to measure these frictions now? Okay, we have covered cross friction, but how to measure them? You have to see now. Here is friction measurement methods. In any method, we have to place two specimens in relative motion together together to normal loads and dynamic forces resisting the relative motions. This tangential force resisting the relative motions, and it, it is nothing but the frictional force. So, the different friction measuring devices or method we can discuss here now. <coughs> First one is pin on disc trick, inclined plane disc trick, pin on cylinder ring, cross cylinder ring, pin on reciprocating plate ring. Okay. So these five methods, in general, we are using to measure the frictions. And under it, the first method is in time testing. We are always seen in in the previous lectures on in inclined plane test trick. There, we are finding friction by using normal load and tangential forces. So second method is pin on. This grip. This is the method used for determining the coefficient of kinetic friction between flat surface and specimen. The pin or the specimen is held stationary under normal load, while the disc is rotating. This normal load can be provided by dead weight or by helical compression spring, by hydraulic pressure or by pneumatic pressures. And this tangential forces is measured with the help of transducer mounted on the stationary pin. And this sliding velocity can be changed either by changing the radius of rotation or by changing the rotational speed on the disc. And the coefficient of kinetic friction is given by force upon the Load. Okay. Third method is pin on cylinder ring. So we are putting the pin on the cylinder. The method is similar to the previous one, and we can find this coefficient of friction under a motion. Means you have to find this coefficient of kinetic friction. <coughs> then we can use cross cylinder rings <coughs> for determining the coefficient of kinetic friction again. On the rotating cylinder, there is another cylinder. And fifth one is pin on reciprocating plate ring. Okay, so this method used for determine the again kinetic frictions. So these measurements we can classify again conformal geometrical test and non-conformal geometrical test. Okay, conformal in conformal geometrical test the profile of the two conducting surfaces are matched perfectly. The contact pressure between the two conducting surfaces is moderate. 
and this example of this conformal test we can see this pin on disc pin on disc will be in plate plate three okay and the second method is non conformal geometrical test in this test the nature of contact between the two conducting surface is either a point or a line contact normally the spherical threaded pins having point contact is used as the specimen and the example of this geometry test are spherical threaded pin on disc three pin on cylinder and cross cylinder test tricks and this you test are used to simulate the heavily loaded contacts such as matting gear discs rolling contact bearings cam and followers okay so up to here we are seeing some laws of friction and friction measurement methods <coughs> so today we can stop here in next lecture we are finding this controls and prevention of these frictions by proper lubrication 